In today's cheapo hot seat, Canadian tire clamp meter for your cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. Today we're looking at the 052-0729-4. Oh, gotta love that name. Canadian Tire has been around a long, long time. Founded way back in 1922 by a pair of brothers, J.W. and A.J. Bells, Biles, Bills, as the Hamilton Tire and Garage. Way back in 1922. Later on in 1927, they changed the name to the now legendary Canadian Tire. Ooh, there's a little bit of Canadiana for you. Over the years, the legend has grown into a big, Wow, huge uh, brick and mortar store. Plus they do online and you know, if you are a Canadian, chances are at some point during the month, you end up at your local Canadian Tire. I don't know why. Here it, we're it looking at the 0729-4. Yeah, I know, I hate that Canadian Tire naming scheme. Uh, just horrible. Series of numerics, that's all it is, but hey, that's what we have. Mastercraft, the name of the game, that is their legendary trademark uh, name that all of the Canadian Tire products carry. Now this is kind of a whole hum meter um, in terms of specs. It's plain Jane. It only does AC amps, uh, does volts AC DC up to 600 volts and resistance as well as continuity. But that's it. I mean, it doesn't even do NCV for the love of God. No, it it doesn't. I mean, look, we have one button, one button, and it's a hold button. It's bilingual. It says hold and tenir, which is French for hold. Um, but that's it. I mean, my. Gosh, it can't get more bare bones than that. Not even getting a flashlight with this clamp. Not even a flashlight. This week's shout out goes to Germany, Deutschland. Guten Tag. Hallo, meinen Freund. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I've reviewed quite a few Canadian tire multimeters over the years. Um, honestly, they are never anything to get too excited about. Uh, for the most part, they used to be decent instruments, but uh, not a lot of, you know, excitement. But not today, dang it. Today we're excited because the cheapo clamp is going to prove to us that $69 Canadian is a lot of money for a basic clamp that didn't come out right did it well thank goodness they're giving us a case a pretty decent one of that lots of nice insulation here little carrying pocket uh standard oem test leads and of course uh always get instructions in both english and french in true canadian f fashion canadian tire fashion in this case the instructions are a pull out uh mastercraft digital clamp meter 2000 counts cat 3 600 volt uh yeah like i said it's pretty basic but you know what end of the day chances are they're probably going to sell a lot of these just because it's canadian tire so let's take a look and you know compare it maybe to a, another cheapo clamp and just see how much bang for buck we're gonna get fit and finish wise i gotta say it is good quality uh canadian tires not the oem on these i don't know who is per se i know on some of the multimeters all sun is the oem uh, for this particular clamp i am not 100 percent but build wise uh nice quality plastic good resin pretty solid fairly heavy um so initially the impression is good now where that starts to fall apart for instance is the selector switch it's absolutely atrocious atrocious i mean i am sticking my thumb in there for all it's worth and I can barely change that selector with just one thumb so oh my god and on top of that it's super super sluggish uh yeah I mean in terms of selectors it ain't good it's not good at all also the clamp head itself not bad once again seemed to have to apply a little bit more pressure than normal uh to open up the jaws ah! but that being said you know at least it's opening and closing with good firm support so yeah very plain jane 2000 count basic lcd display here uh nothing going on uh no backlight either so you know contrast wise you are at the mercy of uh, your surroundings there is some glares you can see coming in here um it's okay it's a little chunky funky um probably not the greatest display a backlight would have been a huge bonus but uh, alas is not to be take a closer look at the selector switch starting with the 400 ac amp position 
20 amps AC. AC volts up to 600 volts. DC volts up to 600 volts. Resistance. Continuity. Bottom of the meter, we have two inputs on the left, the common or ground on the right, the positive. I'll run a few comparative tests today alongside the B side uh, clamp. This is a great little clamp, the ACM91. Um, wow, talk about bang for buck. This does AC DC uh, amps uh, as well as temperature. Um, um, it just, just, this sucker's loaded. So, you know, uh, and half the price, half the price of this Canadian tire. So, what are you paying for? Well, hopefully we'll figure that out. One thing I do kind of like about this clamp is the fact that that display is horizontal, staring at you right in the face. Um, where if you look at the B side for it, um, yeah, but look at that display. Uh, I mean, geez, it is gorgeous. And it does have a backlight. Uh, I believe this one was 6,000 count, true RMS. Uh, yeah, now speaking true RMS, once again, Canadian Tire, it is not true RMS either. Oh, wow. DC precision voltage right now, 10.0 is what we want to see. Now with that lousy resolution, we're getting about 10 volts-ish. Oh, wow, this thing is just not accurate. We only have one scale on the DC range, 600 volts. So you're really not going to get anything in terms of accuracy with the Canadian Tire meter. Look at that B-side, whoa, 10.00, exactly what we want. In terms of resistor precision, 0.100 of a kilo ohm. Uh, yeah, we don't even have that range in resistance mode. This is a 100 ohm precision resistor coming in as 0.100 of a kilo ohm. So uh, it's fairly accurate, but the range, once again, is just not there. And wow, yeah, I couldn't even get one mega ohm out of this Mastercraft clamp in resistance mode. Nope. Measuring range, two kilo ohm. That's it. That's all in resistance. Oh, man. I'm going to take a really quick look at AC amps. I have this hooked up to a uh, splitter and a blow dryer. And let's start it off in low mode. Let's see what we're doing for a current draw. Maybe I'll dry my hair at the same time. So 1.3 amps and coming in is 1.4 amps. 1.4 amps for the B side. Now we'll just crank it up a little bit more. Let's see what we've got. So pulling just over 11 amps with the uh, little hair dryer. Now let's uh, compare that to the Mastercraft. So coming in is 11.2, very close to the B side. So in terms of uh, AC amps, at least it holds its own. Yeah. Taking a look at AC volts right now. Now remember the Mastercraft is not true RMS. The B side is. 117, 118, kind of wafing back and forth. 119.0-ish for the B-side as well. For the B-side, you get that dual display uh, showing us the frequency, which is always a bonus. Looking at continuity now. Stock default test probes that ship with the Mastercraft. Three, two, one. Wow, it is scratchy, but it is really fast to latch. And it's loud. Hmm, better than I thought. Let's try the Probe Masters. Wow, what a difference. Loud, latched. Oh yeah, and fast too. Seventy-nine point eight decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Oh, that is loud. Here we are in LED diode mode. Now it is not present on the meter itself. You're not getting that diode display, but in continuity, uh, it is coming up over here, as you can see. So not on the rotary selector, but it is showing up on the LCD itself. Okay, starting off with a red LED and it is lit with a forward voltage drop over to the green. It is lit, but no forward voltage drop. The yellow, okay, looking good. All right, let's try the white LED. Yes, it is lit. No forward voltage drop. And the blue, lit. It's 
standard diodes. No problem. In terms of illumination, four out of five. Hey, that's not too shabby. Output voltage in diode mode, a halfway respectable 3.5 volts. Alrighty, we are going in, folks. Uh, let's start off with the reverse side. One nice brass threaded insert to access those three AAA batteries. Um, reverse side connectors for the PCB to make contact. But that's it. Good quality plastics, I have to say. Overall, the build quality here is definitely there. Um, better plastics than you normally are going to find. Now, the crux of the show. I have to say, I was a little bit surprised here. Look at those PTCs and MOVs. Whoa, quite a, a few. Four PTCs and three MOVs. So uh, definitely a bonus. They are surrounding uh, two split type variety uh, jack inputs. Um, soldering overall pretty PC decent. Cop, that's a 48 pin uh, package. Um, which IC is it? Honestly, I do not know. Over here we have an LM358. Oh, the glorious LM358. A low power dual op amp. Um, I believe it has a plus three to plus 31, 32 uh, volts. So see those everywhere. And as well over here, just on the side, we have a uh, 630 volt uh, plus or minus 5%. That's a metallized polyester film capacitor. So the board itself, pretty populated for a small PCB. Um, pretty clean though, I have to say, we have a marking here of September 2014. Whoa, revision 1.0, MS 2030 is the signifier on that PC. So it uh, looks like perhaps Maztec might have been the original OEM. Nice on heavy duty this. spring here for that clip. The current jaws themselves, once again, pretty solid. We have a nice uh, metal inlay there as well. So sometimes you see plastic and uh, that's really a no-fly zone. But here at least we're getting what we should be seeing. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit deeper. I want to take a look at that crappy selector switch. Oh, and I just noticed we have some trim pots over here, a V. VR1 it looks like and another one here at the tops and actually another one over here as well so you do have some user self calibration uh, options here if that's your thing okay so let's do the old flipperoo and oh yeah who's your daddy there is the uh, encased display which is nice to see there's our zebra strip over here and those inputs the positive and negative are permanently attached to that PCB um, rotary selector tracks are right here. They are not greased at all. And there is that horrible selector switch. Oh yeah, now the crux of the mechanism seems to be hidden below. So I can't get in deeper. Um, you know, I'd be really surprised if this had a ball and spring because it is just so darn lame. I somehow doubt it. But it does have six pads here uh, making contact with the roadie tracks so in a nutshell there you go you know not as bad as i was thinking um all right let's get back together come back with my closing thoughts closing thoughts on the mastercraft 0520729-4 uh, yeah you know i'm not fond of this clamp meter by canadian tire mastercraft no i'm not fond of it because it just doesn't do much does it specs are rather lame as lame could be in 2023 and i'm sorry for 69 bucks canadian about 55 us dollars no way jose should they be charging anywhere near this now I did have some saving graces that teardown at least proved that it has decent input protection if you're looking for a basic and i mean basic in the basic word sense of the word uh, if that's all you need and you can get this at a bargain basement price at least it has a decent build quality so maybe it's okay but if you get it anywhere near the selling price man oh man run as fast as you can no dc amps uh yeah just the bare minimum not even a proper freaking flashlight uh, on this clamp meter there's a lot better clamps out there for a fraction of the price don't be shy let this one walk on by Canadian Tire 0520729-4 gets a very sad 1.5 out of 5 stars.
And I'm being generous, folks. A lot of people out there in Canadian tire land. Shall I say crappy tire land? No, no, no. Hey, I know you like your Mastercraft stuff, and they do make some good quality products. Just that this clamp is not one of them. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one. Keep on testing.